Hey there, nomads of lore. I'm Sean. And I'm Jonathan. And together we are Mead and Mischief, your home away from no home. And today we are going to be doing our take two reaction to Amazon's Wheel of Time, episode seven. Like I said, this is going to be our take two reaction for episode seven of the Wheel of Time. Now, our take two reactions, the way we do these is, you know, we watch the show, we do our regular reaction, we can put a link to the I, in the iCard to our original reaction to the episode, and then we take in more information from all sorts of different places, and we give you our updated thoughts. Now, also, like, if you've watched any of our other take two reactions, all of our take twos tend to have a little bit different focus, just because mm. that's how the, the episodes play out. So, yep. this particular take two is going to be primarily focused on some of the scenes and things that happen in this episode that we've heard some other people not liking in our comments and other other places but we really like and have some justifications for actually one that I'm very surprised that I'm fond of <laughs> and we'll give you some more details on that in a bit. Now before we jump in we should make sure and give you where the spoiler level for this video is going to be. For pretty much all of this video, our the spoiler, as far as book spoilers, is not going to really go past anything in book one. Uh, we are going to be talking kind of very generally and vaguely about IEL culture, which we technically don't learn about until later in the books. But we're not going to give any plot level spoilers or any real, real details, basic. real, real basic stuff with all mm. of that. We're going to start with uh, one of Jonathan, actually one of our, both of our favorite scenes and, and what we think about it. So what did you think about the cold open? <laughs> oh man. The cold open was flipping phenomenal. Yes, it, was it was amazing. <laughs> one of my favorite scenes in that for sure, my, probably my favorite scene in that episode, maybe one of my favorite scenes. I think it, I think it beats the low gain cold open for me, which is saying oh. something because that one is near perfect. Yeah, that one's pretty so, good. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's one of those iconic scenes that I was reading that I never thought I'd be able to see mm -hmm. live. I'd never be able to see like re reenacted basically, and so I I was super excited. Especially to see not it. in that way. Exactly. Exactly. One problem people had with this was the fact that she unveiled herself. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that she pulled the veil down and she didn't. And yes, we agree. That's a problem. Um, we talked about this in our take one reaction, mm -hmm. our first reaction of this episode. Uh, so we'll link that in the card. And and she probably would have, an ideal would have reveiled herself before continuing the fight whenever the guy came over her head. But um, I won't go into too much detail, but my one uh, thing that I think against that or, or that kind of supports that for me is that we only get to see this character probably this one time. We might mm -hmm. see another flashback probably. somewhere in the future, yeah. but probably this one yeah. time. So to really connect with her, I really think it was necessary. And we kind of went into helpful some detail at the very and, and helpful not necessary, to, yeah. to, to kind of connect with her because that was down. So there's that. So the second thing that people have had a problem with is the overall uh, le level of activity mm -hmm. that she goes through <laughs> as far as her physical activity, uh, spinning around and all the kind of things. And, and, um, you know, granted she probably wouldn't have been able to do that. A, a person that, that far, level, yeah. a person that far into their pregnancy is not going to be able to, to do the extreme things that she was doing probably. However, on good authority and talking to lots of, you know, or hearing from lots of doctors and lots of midwives and all different things, it really depends on your level of activity, physical activity going into your pregnancy, how much physical activity you'll be able to do after or during your pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so uh, an IEL, knowing what they go super through, superhuman, <laughs> yeah, superhuman, they're, they're going to have, they're going to be able to do a lot of, you a lot know, a lot, lot more than the average, average person. So more than the average bear, yeah, more <laughs> than the average bear, yeah. So that is the number two thing, <clears throat> and the number three critique that we've heard about this cold open is basically the overall the way it was shot and the the fighting style mm -hmm. that was the chosen, very stylized look, a very stylized look, mm -hmm. and it's it's very gritty and and all the things, kind of like some of the rest of the show, but the fighting style in particular. And that's just honestly going to be a taste thing. If you didn't like it, you didn't like it, and that's probably whatever. But the the one book reference that we can give that kind of that 
kind of helps with mm -hmm. it is is the dancing of the spears. Mm -hmm. um, just not going into super detail with that, but that's that that statement right there kind of gives you that that feeling of the yeah. way she was moving and and everything. So there's our cold open. And and something I did want to say before we continue on is is if you didn't have these critiques, don't you know don't feel <laughs> we're like not, we're, we're telling not. you you have these critiques. <laughs> right. Just. Just move on and, and go yeah. to the next one. So yeah, what, what's sure. the next critique that we heard? So this one is actually a critique for me, not a critique <laughs> of me. Y'all can do that. That's fine. <laughs> That's right. But down in the comments. <laughs> yeah, down in the comments. But this is a critique that I am having. And it's and and I and I want to iterate that this is a feeling that I'm having about a thing right now. And it's and it's my my opinion and feeling. And it concerns the Dragon Reborn mystery and reveal. Mm -hmm. And so I should start it by saying that the Dragon Reborn reveal in episode seven was super awesome for book readers, including us. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh, this is awesome, super cool, whatever. We get to see some things that we were hoping to see. And so it was for book readers, it was great. Now, after watching some non-book readers and their reactions to it, I have more thoughts and opinions, and they. So I've heard from di different uh, non-book readers. I've heard that it's confusing. There, there are several of them that are still not real sure who the Dragon Reborn is and don't really believe it because of they haven't leaned in. Mm. You know, a lot of like what we've said in the past. They didn't. They didn't le make that obvious very well, um, and it shouldn't have. They could have done it without it being obvious, but they leaned very hard into it not being Rand, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's that, and it's confusing. And then on the other hand, I've heard some non-bookers bookers, non -bookers say that it is was anticlimactic. I heard those specific words come out of, of mm -hmm. some, some non-book reading YouTubers' mouths. And so it didn't quite work like they hoped because that whole mystery was for non-book readers, really, mm -hmm. right? Book mm -hmm. readers knew mm -hmm. who the Dragon Reborn was going to be, and we were, of course, excited about it at the end. But the <laughs> and and that's what was so funny about the the actual mystery. What, in my opinion, <laughs> after hearing you say this, that that mystery was actually more interesting, more interesting for us <laughs> yeah, than it more was fun to watch the non-book readers try to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it didn't seem to work very well. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, it hasn't seemed to work out as well yeah. as they thought, which. I, which is very important to say that it's okay. When we make art, we do things that don't always work or communicate yeah. the way hey, we, we want it. You know, even Robert Jordan had his, his wife and his, his edit, as his editor, and, and she mm -hmm. was able to help him communicate what, was, what he was trying to communicate. And so it, it looks like to me, in hindsight, that it hasn't worked as well as they wanted it to. The reason why this is an issue is because... As it's been pointed out so many times by both the really negative people and the and the people in between, and even some of the very positive ones, even some of the like overpraisers will say that the season is too short, and that we only have eight one hour long episodes, and yeah. so we only have so much time to do this. And so, if they wouldn't have leaned into the Dragon Reborn mystery then they could have presented some things differently. Mm. The dreams could have been different. We mm. could have spent some more time, some more time in Rand's perspective. They still could have had some level of mystery like it is in the book, which is not a great mystery, right? But uh, we could have, they could have kept it ambiguous. And even some of the other stuff, it could have been one of the five of you or what, you know, they could have left some of that. Mm -hmm. But they could have, if they weren't trying to lean so heavily into, it's not Rand, it's not Rand, we promise, it's not Rand, <laughs> then they could have done some things different. We could have seen the, the Tam scene early. Mm. We could have seen that in episode one. We could have, you know, the, 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 um, the fever you're, dream. You're not my father, you yeah. know, the, uh, the fever scene. Dream. And, you know, so yeah. they could have done some things differently if they wouldn't have had to lean in so heavily in that. And so this is, this is my hindsight critique that they, that it doesn't seem like it's worked as well. And so in hindsight, from my perspective, I wish that they would have done it a little bit differently uh, with that. Mm -hmm. um, again, for book readers, this was a great reveal at this point, and we loved it. And we all were sitting there thinking, it's about bloody time. <laughs> and, and it was super fun, and I enjoyed it. I just think it's not, I wish they would have done it differently. And the most important thing there is, I hope that they, the people involved 
at least see that it may not have quite worked as well as they wanted it to. And so that can help inform some of their decision-making process in the mm. future. And I really think they're going to. It's it's very obvious that they are listening to fans. There are several different changes. And yep. some of the so we know that some of the advanced character growth with like Perrin and Matt, that comes directly from Rafe's talking to fans about yep. what they want to see and what the, what changes they want to see made. Yep. And so I feel very confident that it's in good hands and they are listening to that. But I wish at this point they would have done it a little bit differently. Yep. Let me jump in here real quick and we're going to talk about future things for us just to keep you all in the know. Mm -hmm. We still are going to do a reaction on Friday, Christmas yes, Eve. Are. It might be a little later than normal uh, just because I'm going to be out of town. And so getting him the video to edit and get everything together to put up might be a little late, but mm -hmm. we'll It'll have one up. Be It'll format. be a different <laughs> format than we're right. used to for sure. Yep. And then uh, the the uh, Saturday live that we've been doing is definitely going to be different. And I may or may not be able to be on. We'll see. Kind of depends on internet. Um, but you will have Sean for sure, and his uh, daughter will be on with her with him. Uh, she's only read she's read, she's read them all. all all books. That's yep. awesome. <laughs> she's read all the books, so she's going to be on, kind of giving you know a different a different take, a yeah. female take on the show, <laughs> be different. Yeah. Uh, and so we'll have that, and then I'll hopefully either at least be in on the comments, if not you know on in some other format. Mm -hmm. But that will be later in the day on Christmas, so you don't have to worry about. 11 a.m. on Christmas morning. It'll yeah. be probably we more in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it'll probably be more like three, four in the afternoon. We're not exactly sure. We'll try to give you all some <laughs> advance <does>. notice. <laughs> yeah. So, and then finally, want to want to point out um, if you'll check check on our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. if you'll click on there, we've already scheduled our live for the first of the year. Mm -hmm. So you can click on there, click give me a reminder so that you'll know when we go on. Yep. Should be about 11 a.m. on the on the first of January. We're and that, super excited. Yeah, about we're that super live. excited about fun. that one. It's going to be mm -hmm. basically talking about anything from episode or from season one all the way through predictions, uh, predictions for season two. Yep. Yeah. So we're super excited about that. Jump into our third point, our third thing that we wanted to talk about, and our third scene, I guess. And some of the things, this is, again, now things that we've heard yep. people having problems with on this thing. So this is men. Um, people have been we saying... We love her. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. Uh, people have been saying that they feel like she's not the same character that we saw in the books. Mm -hmm. And our pushback on that, or our, our defense of that, or whatever it is, is that... We haven't had enough time to see. Mm -hmm, We've only had sure. two very short scenes with her. And yes, I'm while not like we, with Loyal. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly like with Loyal. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten to see the shy Loyal. We we haven't gotten to see men be kind of tomboyish, kind of kitty, uh, kitty like where she kids a lot, I guess. <laughs> but we did see some snarkiness. And so that's yes, kind did. of the intro to that. Um, and then we haven't gotten to see her. Um, be really flirtatious at all or anything like that but we, we still have time yeah. and that's the point we need to give it a little time give them a chance and we may not we may get big changes like we did with land right. um we got a lot of changes with land we're not you know some people are still not happy with those changes mm -hmm. we love it at this yeah. point um it's different it's different than the books yeah it's a whole separate different not land. totally different not totally but different but but he is very smiley very happy a lot more compared to book open mm -hmm. yeah and it it is yeah anyway so <laughs> we may get a change with men who knows we'll see yeah but let's give it some time yep. let's let's move on so we're, we're liking men yeah we i i hopefully some in of fact are too that those two scenes like out of this episode the two scenes with men besides the cold open those are two of my favorite scenes and it's uh, men is my favorite of of uh the men is my favorite of Character. the people that you know what I'm talking about so <laughs> yeah. she's great yeah. And you will like her, I hope. <laughs> anyway, so I, but I am loving her so far. The way they've portrayed her, and um, and just the interactions that she's had with both Moraine and mm -hmm. both and Land. I mean, uh, Rand, mm -hmm. Land, Rand. There's so and many. the differences between those interactions. Exactly, exactly. There are, is it, a very men thing. It is a very men thing. The way she handles Rand and the way mm -hmm. she handles Moraine. You really think about those intricacies and what happens in, well, in the later guardedness. Books. Guardedness yes. with her visions yes. is spot on. Yes. Yeah, super so great. anyway, mm -hmm. 
that's our that's our yep. men portion. What's, so, what's the next thing? Uh, the one of the one thing. of the most discussed things. Mm. Uh, whenever you know people on our reaction and then on our live, you know whatever. Ever, um, we've had some some really great. Co- we continue to get really really great commenters, and uh, the the oh. number one thing that people will be like, yeah, I love this episode. It's all great. The blood snow was amazing, and this and that and the other thing. But that love triangle, I didn't like that. <laughs> and and that's and that there's or been, the high school drama. Yeah, that's what I didn't we, that's like what that. we termed it yeah. right. It was the the yeah. high school drama, and so. <coughs> My in my initial reaction to that, uh, I was relatively positive-ish. I think if I remember mm-hmm. right, I'd have to go back and watch our video to be a hundred percent sure. Um, and thinking about it in a in a uh, light that I, I felt like it was was interesting. And and what I said at the time was that uh, the having some bickering drama y stuff mm. was very Robert Jordan. I mean, it just really was. I mean, I don't know how many times in the books, especially in the early books, we had, very you know, so. girls bickering and doing things like that, you know, especially. And that's was what I say, was saying then. Now, the more I've thought about it, the more I like that scene and for and for a slightly different reason. Um, I like that scene in its own right. So mm-hmm. I don't love the idea if if they continue walking down the path of parents got a crush on Egwene and this causes future drama. I'm out on that thing. All right, I'm not out on the show. Oh, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna be right there with you guys and be like, this is dumb. Just stop it. Right at that probably. I mean, they could they could do something. Amazing, I I but. just have a thought and I want to interject this. Okay. I. If if they do continue down the path of of him having a a crush or whatever a romance thing with Egwene liking her, and it doesn't have an effect with Rand, but it has an effect with Perrin with Perrin and his and future his future. Yeah, um, I actually don't have a problem with that. But that's that's all I'll say. Anyway, yep. go on Be go on with your spoilers. point. I'm yep. not but I'm yep. not spoiling yep. anything. But yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I it's could see that being an idea. interesting. Yeah, thought potentially so, anyway okay so here's here's my thoughts on it now um the this group of folks so that that whole drama drama mama thing right <laughs> where they're all fussing at each other and all this stuff is going on first of all this this group of people who have grown up in the two rivers now admittedly their all of their backstories are somewhat darker than they are in the books and all of that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but still pretty sheltered existence and they've been ripped out of that with tons of trauma, tons and tons of traumatic stuff, mm-hmm. crazy stuff. And they haven't had a chance to breathe, to, to take the time to deal with any of that. And nope. so, so first of all, the idea that they would be fussing at each other over things that they know are not true is extremely believable. Oh yeah. And it's really, just, really just great. taking Perrin into effect of like going from killing his wife, Yes. To yeah. having to deal with all that and, and not be able to talk to anybody to finally, okay, maybe I'll open up and to a Gwen. Exactly. And admit it. Mm-hmm. And then getting cut to pieces by a white mm-hmm. cloak. And then not not really even fully healing from that and going in through the, the well, waves. Well, probably was fully healed by well, Sedai. Yeah, but <laughs> okay, yes. But, yeah, I, I mean fully healed mentally yeah. from mm-hmm. that. Going into the ways and dealing with all that. I mean, that you... You talk about like an in the real world. If any of us went through all that in that short of a span, yeah, of course we're gonna be freaking well, out. Well, and not on yeah, and like you say, not to mention the the way you specifically all of the yeah. stuff their their worst fears and their worst things yep. that they've dealt with rolling through their head from there, plus all this other trauma and and all these other things that they've been having yep. to deal with, and <coughs> excuse me. And then, of course, we find out that Rand has been dealing with the oh my gosh. I just might be the Dragon Reborn yep. since Winter's Night, right? And so yep. there's all this crap going on, and so that part yep. is so believable, and that and and it is so authentic to what could happen in real life. That part, and then to take that even a little bit deeper and one step deeper, and that is the whole doubting in a relationship mm. idea, mm-hmm. and this. Thinking about that, you know, in an early relationship, especially Mm -hmm. even, you know, like I love my wife tremendously, always have never thought about how 
cheating on her or anything else. And I've all, and I've trusted her from the beginning. And I still, especially in early, in the early parts of our relationship would have thoughts that would intrude and things that would come and be like, does she, does she actually still have feelings for so-and-so or mm. is this and whatever else? And so at this point in this relationship, especially with all that trauma and all this ugly mm. stuff, it is extremely reasonable, even if there's nothing there, even if, as some people have pointed out, it was maybe Perrin did have a crush on Egwene early on, which is entirely possible. I mean, she's Egwene for his, Pete's sake. Yeah, <laughs> prior to his wife and whatever exactly. else. Like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so with all of that other, it is so yeah. excessively realistic. And that is a huge thing that, that Robert Jordan did in his relationships that wasn't done as much, especially in male-female relationships and have some mm. of these, re- and female-female relationships for that matter, these things that are super true to life. And I think it was really, really great. You know, I made the joke in our first reaction about it kind of following the Hollywood script and all this drama being just Mm -hmm. kind of what we have to do because it's a Hollywood, you know, show or whatever. But at this point, I'm looking at it thinking, man, this adds some really great realistic Mm -hmm. tension and and depth to these Mm -hmm. characters and depth to these relationships that that I think is just really, really Mm -hmm. cool. And so I am totally on board with what we've seen so far of the love triangle. You can call it whatever, you can call it a V or whatever the heck you want to call it, Mm -hmm. depending on how you're trying to Mm -hmm. look at it. But I I am so very on board with it. Like, again, if they continue this drama, I think even, I think personally, even if they do what I think you're thinking, Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of it at at that point. But right now, I, I like it a lot. And so that's my take on that. And that's my defense for the tri- the love V triangle star hexagon thing was terrible. So I like it. <laughs> and that's why I like it. So there you go. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video at least. Uh, drop a like in the down below. Click the smash the like button. Whatever you do with the like button. Smash it. Uh, definitely leave us comments. We're loving the comments. They're so awesome. Uh, Mm -hmm. We have some links down in the description, Amazon affiliate links. If you want to support us, go down there and click on those. You don't even have to buy that stuff. Mm -hmm. Buy anything after you click the link. Yep. Good to go. Uh, Like, comment, subscribe. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.